too late. Oh, that's okay. Do you want to hear a sad story? Yes. I only ate one pumpkin cheesecake because I thought Tom would bring more to my house. Oh. And he didn't. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I yeah. had no reason to think that, I'm but I letting, sort of did think it for I'm some reason. I'm letting everyone down with this cheesecake. <laughs> so I was trying to be polite mm-hmm. at Holly's. Mm-hmm. When you should have just eaten them I all. I should have just done what I would have done at your guys' house, sure. which is yeah. eat them all. Yeah. Well, lesson learned. Never give up cheesecakes. <laughs> I should have known. <laughs> like, that cheesecake's there in front of you. By God, you take it. So last time you uh, you went through a bunch of doors, which was super exciting. Mm-hmm. And then you got back to Salazar there, and he told you that you have been invited to a council meeting in Waterdeep. Invited by Leosin, uh, your good friend from the previous adventures. While you are in his office, he says, I think it's time that you guys are a little bit more involved in knowing what we do here. He says, um, and we're going to retcon the name because I changed it a little bit. We are the Guild of the Nine Shadows. Mm, Fancy. We control the fate and the order among the nine planes of existence. Each of them have their controllers. I am the controller of the material planes. And each other plane has its own controller, who you may or may not meet in the future. Uh, But we are in charge of keeping order within the realms and the planes. So if I ABB up up, will you karate chop someone in the neck? (laughs) (laughs) Was Salazar already the controller of the material plane before he opened the fantasy Costco? Or did he... Like, how how did that work together? Because it seems... Like, it works really well together. Sure, yeah. It sure does. It sure does seem like I planned that from the beginning, doesn't it? (laughs) It's all coming together. Knew you did. Knew you did. That's why he's our DM. He says, yes and no. I had my own life before I became the controller, where I did run Fantasy Costco, and through various uh, interactions with different creatures and beings, I have come into the position that I have now. And it is a... It is an excellent ploy for me to get in and out of places and have a whole bunch of things that uh, that nobody else has. Unless you have a fantasy Costco membership. Unless you have a fantasy Costco membership. Lifetime. <laughs> Lifetime. Lifetime. Lifetime memberships. Yes, yes. Side um, note, the controller sounds like some sort of really bad rom-com <laughs> with, like, Julia Roberts in it. Just FYI. We'll, we'll, work, we'll work on the name of who controls... <laughs> We'll Julia retcon Roberts. that too. Okay. Um, since you guys have been here, you have been working on a skill. Okay. You totally happen. You can pick a tool set, and you have been working on gaining the skill associated with said tool set. Oh, thieves' tools done. We're always like, how are we going to open this locked door? Smash it! Smash it! Smash it! Uh, I feel like, character-wise, it would make sense for me to do navigator's tools, because that's, like, my whole thing is, like, maps and stuff like that. Sure. So that gets me uh, sea proficiency as well as forest proficiency. That is correct. So, we're, oh, and I also have swamp proficiency. Oh. So, Ooh, I'm good really good in nature. All right. Um, I think I will go with maybe disguise kit. So that glasses way and a nose. Change our appearance. <laughs> oh, yeah. The bitch and beard always stays, though. So, I don't oh, know yeah. which that, is, that is a downside, though. So, um, could work for you. Could work. Let's go with Smith's tools. I'm a dwarf, after all. So yeah, make note of those, and then you will now have those skills. Uh, thieves tools, navigators tools, and uh, smith's tools. He also says uh, you will be on your way to Waterdeep. Um, I would like you to swing by one of the shops in the guild here, who you haven't been to see yet. He deals in extraordinary items, and he will set you up with a couple things that you, you might need on your adventure. His name is Ozark. And he is down on the third floor. He's the only thing there. You can't miss him. <laughs> it's literally an entire floor devoted to this guy? Yes. Ozark's Bazaar is on the third floor. Ozark's Bazaar. Is he like the Q character from the James Bond series? <laughs> he might be. Okay. It's a possibility. Wait. I'm looking forward to wearing a watch that does like eight <laughs> other things. And Salazar says, if, unless there's anything else you need from me at this moment, I wish you 
a grand adventure. Tibby will unfortunately not be able to come with you as he is from another plane, and he would probably draw more attention to you at this time than you would want. But later on down your journey, he may be able to come and join you further. Hmm. Is there a robot plane? Uh, yeah. Yeah. An angel robot plane? Well, I mean, it's like a mech plane. So angel bots, yeah. Okay. Yeah, angel bots. Yeah. Um, out of curiosity, how did mm. how were we on the same plane as Tibby last time? Uh, Tibby, is, we here are able to bring things to and from other planes. Tibby was brought here after the guild helped him and his clan in a grand battle on their planet. He decided that he wanted to join the guild, and after doing many, many training sessions and proving that he was able to undertake adventures of his own, he was brought in to work with the guild. Okay. And he was partnered with you to help you out uh, picking locks and stuff. Boy, did he ever. Indeed. He was great. <laughs> well, now we don't need him anymore, guys. I've got thieves tools. And he, he had a little bit of a mouth on him. He was a little sarcastic. A little sassy. That damn, that, that damn button. Unfortunately, the programming is hard-coded. We can't change that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the Ozarks. Get some mountain tools. For sure. Let's do this. All right, so you uh, head down to Ozarks Bazaar, and you uh, walk in uh, to this room, and it is a dimly lit, uh, incense-filled apothecary of sorts. As you walk through the entrance, a chime rings throughout the room and from a back storage room door um, a little older man in a in a dark robe comes out and says oh i've been waiting for you thank you for coming down to my bazaar flint and nular and thea right yes, uh, yeah you, you must be ozark. ozark yes i am I'm, i've been waiting to meet you guys for so long come sit down and he brings you to a table um, and he hands you a package each and you open it and in it there are there's a extra healing kit if you already have a healing kit it's extra um, two healing potions and he hands you um, a key each and he says with these keys you walk over to the wall over there this big wall has a key you put your key in and you will get something that should be beneficial to you in your upcoming adventures what sort of sorcery is this magic sorcery okay Super I go sorcery. to the wall and try to put my key in the key. You put your key in the key? Sorry, keyhole. <laughs> oh, I put my key in the keyhole. Smart ass. <laughs> well, I, I often put key. back. keys. <laughs> Which one is that? This one? Uh, and your other detail. I <laughs> how long it takes me to find. <laughs> okay, that's a 90. And a four. 94. So you hear some gears churning through the wall, and a slot opens up. It's a small box comes out of this slot. And when you open it, there's a ring inside. Is it pretty? It is super pretty. It's a super pretty ring, and it goes with your whole ensemble. Ah, yes. He uh, snatches it from your hand and goes and gives it a quick look over. He says, yes, yes, this is the ring of spell storing. I just got a tingle. (laughs) Why were you a ghost right then? (laughs) No, that was like a... Like, I... Yeah, a ghost laugh. That was a pleasure. That was was an ooh of pleasure. I see. You're delighted by your spell ring. Yes. It's pretty, and it does something that has to do with spells. I'm happy. The ring uh, stores spells cast into it, holding them until the wearer uses them. The ring can store up to five levels worth of spells at a time, and when found right now, it contains uh, it contains three spells right now. So I have a question. Are these spells that aren't necessary? They're not in my spell slots, but I could just choose any spells within you my have level to that cast I cast them into your ring. Ring, and then I keep them there, not in my spell slot, so I could have different spells that aren't in my my wheelhouse. Yes, but they're in my ring house. Yes, <sighs> exactly. <laughs> um, so the spells that are in your ring right now, Amy. Hey! are Healing Word, Guiding Bolt. Okay. And 
He's just randomly picking Pretty spells much. right now. He's Pretty just much. like, yeah. he's closing his eyes, his fingers just kind of circling over the page. <laughs> Busted out the Ouija board. <laughs> Searing Smite. Ooh. Oh. That sounds right vengeful, now. which is right up Dia's alley. It's true, she holds a grudge. Yeah, I like it. Who's next? Uh, I guess it is me. I put my key in a hole and turn it. You want to roll your percentile die? Zzz. Dice. I don't know what you mean. Uh, so that's the one with like the number and the zero on it, like this one. Oh, I already put that away. I know you only had your four go. I, I, know, I did. literally did. Uh, sorry, my percentile die, and that's it. So that is a forty-nine. Forty-nine under the O. Forty-nine. Do you hear the same churning of gears and out from um, the slot? Another small box pops, and you open it up. And another ring is inside, and he does the same thing, gives it a look over, and he says, This is an alchemist's ring. When the wearer of this ring imbibes a healing potion, they receive 1d6 additional healing. Sweet. I guess I shouldn't say me. Gives the wearer. If one of my comrades is hurt, I can just slip it on their finger. Lord of the Ring style, throw that ring over there and have it... Yep. Just get on there. All right, uh, I got a... 30. You get a scarf. Sweet. <laughs> you get a cute pair of pumps. Is it some sort it of chili awesome outside. scarf? You get a scarf. Um, out from the slot pops a larger bag, and from the bag you pull a, a dwarven plated belt. Oh. He tells you that this is the belt of dwarven kind. FYI, I totally wrote out belt of dwarven king, and then quickly corrected it. <laughs> apparently I am just a great You're the king now. Yeah. While wearing this belt, you gain the following benefits. Your constitution score increases by two oh. to a maximum of 20. You have advantage on charisma persuasion checks made to interact with dwarves. You're like, look at my sweet belt, now do what I want. But that's only on charisma checks involving dwarves. Yes. If you weren't a dwarf, it would also allow you to grow a beard by the day's end. <laughs> oh, son of a bitch. Doesn't need that. I've got that talent natural. Yup. Thank you, Ozar. Oh. Yeah, thanks, buddy. You're most welcome. Please, please come back as soon as you can. I have lots of things that you will might maybe need. Sure, that sounds, sounds great. great. Maybe some things you don't. Who knows? Certainly are ubiquitous, comrade. <laughs> well, be on your way. Go catch the train. What's a train? <laughs> well, we didn't have airplanes last time, so. I don't know if we have trains. We have flying castles. That's true. Do we know what trains are? Yes, because you've ridden the train before. Did we? <laughs> when you went to fight the volcano giant? Oh, that's true. We did ride the train. Yeah, as the train that, you know, took you out and then just kind of showed up. And... Can't just forget everything I just said. Yeah. I didn't know if that was canon or not. <laughs> it's all part of it. I was just kidding. I just forgot. To the train! So you guys go hit the train, and it drops you just outside of Waterdeep. And it goes off, and uh, as you turn to look towards Waterdeep and look back, uh, the train tracks uh, are gone. Oh, ghost train. Polar Express. (laughs) Any of those? Ghost train. (laughs) Polar Express. (laughs) Spirit of Vengeance? Come on, give us something know. here. Back to the Future 3? Any of these. <laughs> and it, as the as the train pulls away, the conductor leans out, and it's it's Doc Brown. Uh, um, so you guys walk towards Waterdeep, I assume? Yes. Yep. Um, so you come in near the south, uh, south end of Waterdeep, which is the south and dock wards. And when you arrive in Waterdeep, uh, you sense a sudden shift in the wind and with it brings a strange sense of unease. The feeling is akin to the drop in air pressure before the approach of a deadly storm um, or faint tremors felt from a landslide or earthquake far away. Uh, And you look around and you notice you're not the only ones who have noticed this. The city around you goes unnaturally quiet. Uh, No dogs are barking, no birds squawk, even A lot of the street vendors um, have all gone silent. Silence lasts only a moment um, before the normal sounds of Waterdeep begin to pick back up again, and you hear um, just the normal commotion of the city. Well, that was weird. Yeah, that really gave me the old Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm heebie-jeebies. Leosin's note um, told you to meet at the Lord's Palace. 
I would say we go see our homeboy, Leosin. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. I mean, we mm-hmm. just got hooked up with some equipment, so we're good as far as that's concerned. We should probably just head on in there and see what's what. Yeah. Okay. Agree. So as you, uh, as you travel through the city, um, you notice that... A lot of the animals throughout the city, the horses, the dogs, the cats, all seem a bit unusually nervous and on edge, um, more so than you would have you know, normally expected walking through just any random city. Sure, but we did just experience that weird weather phenomenon, so that's probably playing along in there. Mm-hmm. So you pull into the Lord's Palace... And you, as you walk through the main entrance, you are greeted by Leosin, and he says, I'm so glad you are here, friends. There's been some things going on, and I feel we need your help. The council meetings uh, are about to begin, um, and I've got you into them. Let me lead you this way. Is there anything you require from me before I send you in there? They, they will likely ask you about your dealings with the cult to this point. So be prepared to give your accounts um, of your adventure so far. I was not told we would need to study for any sort of exam. <laughs> <laughs> this is just uh, like a town council meeting? This is a council meeting of all of the lords and leaders okay. across Faerun. Right. All right. Okay. But not, not a guild council meeting? No. Okay. Great. I mean, still not great because yep, our still, memory still is pretty poor. Yep. But we'll we do, do our best. I remember taking a train. We'll, 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 <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Hold on, people. This could get real rough. <laughs> but sure. Sure, why not? I'm sure we can do it. We're mm-hmm. we're nice people. We can answer some questions. We generally know what happened. <laughs> Except when it comes to means of transportation. He leads you uh, to a large chamber um, and opens the door. And council is currently going on. Whoa. Um, so you enter and you see the man at the head of the table. He's doing the talking right now. And they are talking about actually the sound that you heard uh, when you came into Waterdeep. Um, he is asking if anybody knows anything about this sound. Um, and one woman stands up and she says, The disturbance that's been sensed across the Sword Coast is the Dracorn, an ancient device whose sounding alerts dragons across Faerun that great events are unfolding. It's impossible to say what the sounding means, uh, but all dragons hear it clearly and will eventually answer its call. The guy at the beginning of the table says, Lady Silmerhelf, where did you get this information from? Why do you know so much about dealings of dragons? And she refuses to say where she knows from, just that a family benefactor has told her stories of such a device. At that time, they look to you Um, as you enter the room, and Anthar Froom stands up and says, Our good friends, who have saved us many, many times, are here to tell us their tales and shed us light on some of the dealings that they they have had with the cults and hopefully bring a little more information uh, to what we have. He says, Flint, Nulara, Thea, if you could begin to tell your tale as to what you have experienced. Where to begin? (laughs) Well, the main thing to know is that the dragon cult is collecting a hoard of treasure uh, at the moment to try and awaken Tiamat, the queen of the dragons. We curbed that a little bit. Got a giant on our side, kind of smashed his castle, floating flying castle. Mm-hmm. As you mentioned that you smashed the castle, a couple of the delegates kind of whispered to each other and they have a displeased look on their face. But Would you like to share with the class? No, continue. <laughs> it was un- <laughs> it was unavoidable. It's fair. It's fair. Yes, it was like we were working together. Yes, we had teamed up with him to uh, try and curb the assault of the cult. And as we were in the process of doing so and battling a dragon, uh, unfortunately, we uh, did a little bit of a face plant into a mountain with the castle. We certainly did. Um, what's her face? That awful lady. Resmir. Thank you. So Resmir was involved as well. She wants... There's there's dissent in the ranks. So there are higher up people of the dragon cult that 
would prefer Tiamat doesn't arise. There's five leaders of the Dragon Cult, and they weren't exactly agreed on what direction they want the Dragon Cult to take. Some wanted to raise Tiamat, some did not want to raise Tiamat. Um, so we killed one of them. Yep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then so now we, there's four. we were in this horrible castle accident, and some of our memories are a bit foggy. That is uh, that is entirely understandable, having crashed in a castle and all. Yes, yes, some indeed. Folks in it was castle not crash. <laughs> um, I, the takeaway, though, is that I think we could maybe find common enemies with some of the higher-ups in the Dragon Cult to completely destroy the Dragon Cult, it seemed like. There's definitely some... Uh, not everyone is on the same page over there, yeah. so... And if, if not destroy it, then at least alter its course of actions. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And there's... Do we ever... We didn't ever end up getting back to help the lizard people. Uh, they were no, we, we did not signal them with a giant owl in the sky. Ah, see, it's, now I'm filled with guilt. Yeah. Because we said we'd get back there to help them, and instead we crashed a castle and never ended up getting back there. So there's a whole group of lizard folk who are working for the dragon cult against their will because the dragon cult have stolen their land. Well, it seems we should send someone to help them, especially if a promise was made. Yeah, maybe they're still just, like, waiting for that signal. I mean, I don't know how yeah, long it's been. I really hope they haven't done anything. Well, we killed Resmir though, who was running that compound, mm-hmm. right? So she never went back, obviously. Yep. So but there was an old black dragon yes. in the area that was also yes. kind of running things Mm -hmm. that they had previously been allegiant to so but still if you could send some people to help them out that would be great because we feel very bad very responsible for them too we kind of we we stirred the pot there we kicked the bee's nest and we don't want that them to suffer for that Anthar speaks up and he says we will send a group of our paladins we will get the information from you and send a group of our paladins to go and make sure that things are taken care of in that region. Oh, and they have, like, a buttload of treasure there. Yes. Delightful. We'll make sure that's taken care of as well. Taken care of. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, the treasure was gone, guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oops. The lord at the top of the table says, Have you come across any hatcheries, any dragon <gasps> eggs, any oh, yeah. anything that could be used from that side? Absolutely. I, I reach into my, like... Satchel, my my bag, and I produce a shell, a, a black dragon egg shell. Because remember, I kept one of those. We we destroyed a bunch of them in a cave. He says you destroyed the eggs. Yes, yes. Hmm. most of them. It seems to be split uh, among all of the delis. There seems to be split feelings as to that. He says the eggs could have been used to negotiate with the dragons, but. What's well, done is done. There's still one out there. We, it was a situation. It's fair. We had to make a call. They were going to hatch them to unleash all holy hell on everything. And you said you have killed Resmir, yes? Yes. Yeah. And have you come to learn any alliances they have within other groups? There's been rumors that they've been working with the Red Wizards of Thay. Have you heard anything of that? Uh, yes, they yeah. definitely are. Hmm. Do you know the reason behind that? Uh, No, that was something that we never really got privy to. He speaks up and says, the rumors we have heard is that they're using the wizards to conjure Tiamat. So once they have adequate hordes of treasure, um, adequate um, number of recruits and people in order to support their cause, um, they are using the red wizards in order to actually summon Tiamat is what we have heard. Yes, that is our our high-ranking source in the Cult of the Dragon said much the same. The Red Wizards are pawns to help with the rise of Tiamat. Excellent. I'm glad that checks out as far as you are concerned. The the man you've been mainly speaking to continues and he says, I am Lord Daggled Neverember and we wish to recruit you to help us gain more information and to help fight against the cult and the rise of Tiamat. We are willing to deputize you and your your troop in order to gain information, give you investigative powers, which will allow you access to places where you would otherwise be unable to go. 
If you're willing to help us, we would be willing to do that and support you in any way that we can as far as each of our individual clans and and organizations go. Yeah, that sounds like um, we're pretty much on the same page. What do you guys think? Agreed. Sounds like our interests are definitely aligned. Yeah, that uh, cult attacks on us have been pretty personal, so we're on board for this. He says, excellent. We will have that paperwork written up at the end of this session. Um, There is one other thing that we have to discuss. The assassination of Arthagast Albrinter. He was a masked lord of Waterdeep and husband to Remy Haventree. And she speaks up and she says, we through the Harpers, after this assassination, have sworn to destroy the cult and the threat it presents to the Sword Coast. So far, we have been instrumental in bringing the factions together for this Council of Waterdeep, and we wish to set up further alliances uh, with you and with others throughout Faerun. If through your journeys you find you are able to create alliances with any other groups you come across, please tell them of what we are doing and how they can help our cause. Sure, yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Uh, So so sorry to hear of your husband. Thank you. It was a great loss. That is all we have right now. Leosin told me that he has some more information regarding the whereabouts of one of the worm speakers, one of the leaders of the dragon cult. So if you please see him on your way out, that would be marvelous. Everybody kind of stands up and makes their way to the door and the lady who was talking about the Dracorn, Dalla Silmerhelv, uh, comes over to you guys as everybody's kind of leaving and she says, I, I know I didn't say much more, but I may know where the Dracorn is. Um, and if we know where it is, we can control it. And if we can control it, we might be able to sway the dragons to not work towards bringing Tiamat back. I lean over to Nular and I go, oh, thank God she came forward because I was going to beat the information out of her after when she said <laughs> <laughs> that. She sounded like she knew more, but she didn't give any more information. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, we should totally find the Dracorn. Well, whereabouts Together. is it? Or do you think it is? The Sea of Moving Ice was the last known location of the Dracorn. Um, No one has ever been able to pinpoint its present location from the sound or even verify with certainty that the relic is still in the Northern Sea. Um, But the search, I feel, must start there as that is the last known place. There is one person who could tell us more. She's a tiefling sorcerer called Makath the Crimson. No one alive knows more about the Dracorn than her, um, but the Arcane Brotherhood, of which she is also a member, hasn't seen her for three years. She was investigating the Sea of Moving Ice when she disappeared as well. If you wish to go to the Sea of Moving Ice, we can have a ship readied for you to deliver you up there. Uh, Are we on good terms with this Arcane Brotherhood? The Arcane Brotherhood is not an enemy of any of our causes. They haven't directly worked with us, but we have no reason that they would present a problem to you in finding more information about what is happening. We could even get them on our side. That is a possibility. If you are able to find Makath, if she's still living, as she's been up there unheard of for a few years, if you are able to find her, find more information, yes, the Arcane Brotherhood would be a great resource for, for knowing more about dragons and knowing more about Tiamat. All right, thanks for the heads up. All right, well, should we go there? Can we... Donnie is a pseudo-dragon, so really he's just a tiny dragon. Yep. So yep. Donnie... I'm assuming we're alone now. All the other council members have left. Everybody's kind of filtered out. Donnie, when we first got here, did you hear something? What did it say? When when it felt like the air pressure dropped? Or did you... What, what, tell us what you experienced. And by tell us, I mean psychically tell us in our brains. He says, uh, well, guys, uh, I, I, di- I did hear the noise. Um, it, and it was a noise. It wasn't just a pressure drop to me. It was coming, coming far from, um, far from the mountains up towards the north. So this is what she's saying is is possible. Uh, so it seems like a likely place to start. Do you, do you feel like a draw? Is it calling you? Do you want to go? I mean, I, I, I don't really want to because you know, it's it. 
I know what's going on, you know? I mean, there's dragons trying to bring back batter dragons, and I'm a good dragon. I don't like to fight the dragons. Oh, fair enough. Fair Ma- enough. Making fun of batter? No. Yeah. <laughs> we all were. <laughs> <laughs> this is good, though, because um, if it sounds again, we like, at least he, have he, some he can sort hear of it, idea, right? Yeah. Like, I just wanted a little uh, confirmation that old Dalla there wasn't selling us a so bill of goods. Yanking our chain. <laughs> So yeah, it's the Dracorn. It's a dragon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like Not just a guy with a loud siren, man. <laughs> uh, so what do you think, guys? Sea of Moving Ice? That sounds I like a good go. spot to go. Sounds like we should go see Ozarks again and see if he has any, like, parkas or anything for us. <laughs> Or just ask them if they're going to, like, they're arranging our, our travel on the boat, that would right? Work too, yeah. Are they arranging us some, some appropriate I'm warm sure. clothes? And if so, oh. let's so go. Oil skins let's of some this. sort. Yeah. As you head back out, um, Leosin is standing out uh, on the other side um, of, the, of the chamber that you were in. Hey, buddy. How did it go in there, guys? It was tough to remember some of it. But I think we got the point across. Well, they did say that your brain damage was extensive from the crash. And I'm not surprised. <laughs> I've lost my sense of smell. Well, that is going to be deadly to you coming up here. I mean, I'm just what? kidding. <laughs> it's I'm a smell-based campaign. No! <laughs> <laughs> he says, is there any anything that you gathered from that? I, I do have some information to tell you regarding one of the worm speakers. Great. Right? Um, yes. yes. We have heard that... Varam the White, who is a close ally and confidant of Severin, is rumored to have lost their dragon mask. He was the holder of the white dragon mask, and he is currently last spotted, rumored to have been spotted, out near the Serpent Hill. Severin's the head dude, right? Out of character? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Other out of character question. So when we met that woman in the white scale mail at that weird house that we went through the portal, that was not Varem the White. That was just some other person wearing white. Yeah, she wanted to have the white mask. Okay. Um, but but Varem was the holder okay. of the white. I couldn't remember, and I just saw a woman wearing yeah, white in sure. my notes, yeah, yeah. and then a list of all yeah. the people, and thought that that's who that was. So, okay, perfect. She was just like his underling that wanted to take over. Exactly. Great. Yes. Okay. The the cult leaders generally have other followers of the dragon type that they are, wear the mask of, so if something happens to them, um, another person is able to step into their place. Great. And sorry, I think we cut you off. He- Mm-hmm. Rem the White he has lost, lost his, his dragon mask. He was... He was rumored to have been seen around the the Serpent Hills. Word came from a, a tradeway encampment called the Boriskir Bridge that he had passed through there. For Rem the White, is, uh, for character information, is a, uh, a dwarf. And he, as other leaders in the cult, uh, generally wear the purple robe set. Likely he would have kept that, as that is his status. So when you're asking about him, if you are asking about him, you can ask about that. I hope he enjoys plus two to dwarf charisma interactions, because he's going to get it. Raz, where are the uh, Serpent Hills on the map? I see the Sea of Moving Ice. Yep. Oh, over here. I do see them. Sorry. They are to the east, like the southeast of where we are. Oh, yep. There you go. And then, yeah, the Borskir Bridge is slightly south of the Serpent Hills there. Mm, yes, it is. So we have, like, a north option and a south option. Okay, so oh, we'll please. send Thea up north to <laughs> Lara south, oh, and I'll just chill in water. Day. <laughs> I like the idea of going to the Sea of Moving Ice if this lady's alive, because that yes. seems like we'd get a little more information. But then again, a former white mask holder in the Dragon Cult might be able to tell us a whole lot of stuff, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if he's there, I guess all we get from him is information and then murder. Yeah, but she gives us information Mm -hmm. and possible allies. And And maybe control of that horn. And possible dragon control, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. because if we can get to that horn... Yeah, um, that would be a huge plus for our side, to be able to convince the dragons not to be all into the Dragon Cult people. Indeed. Just doing some seems... high tech mapping here. Oh, well, also, Ser- Serpent Hills is like 500 miles away. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, it's not close. It's, they're both very far away, according well, to the I'd scale. Well, I say we go north because it sounds like more fun as well, and that's how I base a lot of my decisions to adventure. We've decided. Okay. Oh, you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> well, it helps for which page I flip to. Leosin says, "So, where do you guys need to go in order to further your investigation?" Well, I believe our first stop should be the Sea of Moving Ice. So you will need a ship then. We will. I will procure you passage. The Sea of Moving Ice is dreadfully cold. We will make sure that you have winter clothes in order to survive. It's probably a good thing. Mm. Um, And if there's anything else you think you might need, we will get it for you. But you seem fairly well equipped. Leosin, in the council meeting, they said they would uh, send some people to help the lizard folk that we kind of maybe left a little hanging near the Mirror of Dead Men. Can we Mm -hmm. count on them to be good to their word? Or should we go and finish our own promise that we Uh, made? He he asked, who was it that told you? Anthar Froom. If Anthar or Lord Never Ember told you, um, I will pass that information on to them, and they will send someone to take care of that. Okay. Um, that, that is something that, yes, they are of their word and they will make sure, especially the Lord Never Ember, um, as that is in his area of jurisdiction. So okay. he. Good. So that's a problem under his own roof. Exactly. That's what you're saying. Okay, yeah. good. So he will want to have that taken care of if, it's, if it is still an issue going on. Well, all right then. I feel like there's still maybe one witch running around up there too. Maybe warn oh, them about that. Definitely. No, those witches were down by greenest, <laughs> oh. they were further down. I, I thought they were in this was. in this wood. No. Okay. Or this wood? Never mind. There's no witches. <laughs> right. They're fine. Yeah. Maybe the Misty Forest? Is that where it was? I don't know. It was further south. To the boat! <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> the, the, captain, uh, the captain who we will likely proqui- er, procure... Procure? Procure. I can't think of good words. That's not a word. It's not a word. It is now. Anyways, the captain who we will hire is Captain Larusta Halfface. Really? Half-face? You gotta make these names half-face. easier on yourself, Russ. Halfface. Halfface. Did she only have half a face? Captain what halfface? Larusta. Larry Halfface? <laughs> Captain yeah. Larry Halfface. Perfect. Larry Halfface. Okay. Um, Sounds we handsome. Worked, we have worked with him in the past, and he is he is a good man who will get you to where you need to go. And we will send um, all the all the clothing you require down to his ship, um, and have that ready for you when you are ready to go. Fantastic. To the ship. North. <laughs> so you guys head yeah. to head down to the docks, and there are plenty of ships down there. There is, uh, there are a bunch of large ships, some really small ones. Some that climb on rocks. And some that climb on rocks. Um, But as you walk through the docks, um, you see um, a couple, a couple individuals who you recognize wearing Order of the Gauntlet regalia coming from a... Hey, do we get, like, badges or anything? We've been deputized, right? Like... As you leave, Leosin hands you a writ for your deputization. Um, so you have on your person a written letter from... Just a letter? Like, no no badge? And or... a badge. Okay. And a sweet, sweet badge. Okay. Perfect. I'm gonna whip that out and yeah. interrogate some motherfuckers. All right. Uh... <laughs> So you got a, you got badges, you okay. got writs. All right, we got rings. Yeah, and he and a snazzy <laughs> belt. I have a follow up oh, question yeah. about the ships. Um, yeah. you said that there's ones that climb on rocks, but do our ships have a first name <laughs> or perhaps a last name? <laughs> <sighs> yep. Well, they I must have myself. a name. I don't know. What boat are we going on? If you could spell out the letters one at a time, too, that would be great. All right, I, I will do that. My boat, it has a first name. It's... So you go, uh, you are down at the docks, and you see a couple people from the Orders of the Gauntlet coming from a ship. Mm-hmm. And as you walk in that direction, a rough-sounding fellow yells out to you and says, You guys are the ones going up north, aren't you? Who wants to know? The old half face. Well, I'm, I'm I'm Larry Half Face. <laughs> ah, Half Face. How are you? Today? Uh, hail and well met, good sir. That to you too. This is the uh, F R O S T S K I M M R. Oh, the Frost Skimmer. Yeah. 
<laughs> Thank you for playing along with that. You're welcome. That's a fine looking, fine looking craft. Uh, fine you looking are look- ship. You are looking at the she ship. She looks seaworthy. <laughs> Our, oh, the Frost Skimmer has seen many a battles. And going up north, it's the finest ship you can get on. You look it over, and it is a much smaller ship than most of the ships around. Indeed. I start knocking on the wood like I'm looking for something, like I know a lot about it. Yeah. It is mm-hmm. a, a, a single mast ship, about 60 feet long, and about 20 feet across. So it is a considerably smaller than all the other ships. Um, around you. Okay, it's not the size of the ship that matters. Is there a genie on this boat? There, he's, he's, no, there's no genies on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this fine fellow in the turquoise with the saber? He looks rather genie-like. He's one of the crewmen. Old no name. <laughs> you know they're gonna die. Old you just genie. Know. He, didn't, he didn't name them. He didn't bother to name them. They're I didn't even give die. each of them a, a each of them a character. So you know, it's, you know, that's fine. <laughs> name is Gene E. Gin. <laughs> Tom and I decided that yeah. we think it's really funny. <laughs> Lurista says, as a matter of fact, there is one guy named Gene who doesn't have a last name, so we'll just give that to him. <laughs> <laughs> Good old half face. Always playing along with our shenanigans. <laughs> Larusta or Larry, is a, uh, is a human, um, and he wears a mask over his face or like a, a covering on his face. You see massive scarring over the eye of his, uh, of the right side of his face. How long is our uh, trip going to be here, Larry? Well, it's, uh, it's several days um, trip. We have to go up the Sword Coast. Could take us anywhere from five to, five to eight days to find what we're looking for. What are we looking for? <laughs> I think we're the ones who tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tom. No, that's fine. <laughs> I thought like, maybe I he was taking us like, <laughs> to a destination and then we were branching out from there. Must be going to take us to the last known sighting of Tiefling Macoth, right? I would assume. <laughs> he says, well, the information that I was given from Lady Silmerhalve was that the, the Tiefling you're looking for um, Macoth uh, reported her progress to the host tower of the Arcana Brotherhood by way of sending spells, and her last report spoke of seeing ice hunters paddling their sealskin boats towards a huge iceberg, flattened like a plateau across its surface, um, but ringed by icy peaks, and she had intended to follow the ice hunters and investigate the iceberg. Um, after that, no more reports came. Attempts to find Macoth by the Brotherhood, using scrying and other magical means, only located her ship adrift and heavily damaged. Um, some of the ship's crew um, have been seen dead, um, but no signs of the tiefling, tiefling sorcerer were ever found, which is why they believe she may st- might still be alive. However, there is um, the lair of a dragon who is, who is very powerful. He is the name of Ruthator, and he has been known to control through fear, um, control different clans up there. He himself has, he knows magic, is what I'm trying to say here. And he is a very powerful dragon, and no doubt has protected his location of his lair. Um, and if Makoth is alive, in addition to the lore that she can you know, share regarding the Dracorn, the Arcane Brotherhood would be most grateful to get her back and any other information she has gained where she is being held. Would it be a bonus if um, we kind of took a the tour of the dragon out of the equation? I mean, you guys are fighting dragons, right? You betcha. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, if Ultimately, we get the Dracorn, though, maybe we side. could we could like bridge the divide and all come together. It doesn't sound like he's that kind of guy. Rules through fear and whatnot. But I mean, he's, like, he, from what I've heard of a he's a he's a he's a mean. Motherfucker. Can we get on this boat? Let's do this thing. Yes, so you guys climb aboard, and he hands you all the clothes that you would require, winter winter garb, and... I call Top Bunk, and I run down into the... <laughs> <laughs> Turns out it's all just single cots, so there are no bunks. Yeah. Hammocks? Okay, fine. What are we working with? <laughs> There's bunks. There's ah, bunks. Of course. Um, 
as Larust is kind of describing his ship, uh, he says there are forty crew aboard. Um, we do have room for you in uh, in the bunks. I already have my like entire room area set up. They're scented candles. Everything's looking nice. <laughs> I don't like them. It's a wooden boat. I'm not stupid. It's just for just for the fun. <laughs> Says yes. Please don't use fire on my boat. Okay. That would be great. Done or not done. <laughs> you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll put this one out right now. I apologize. No whispering, Mui Caliente, to your sword either. Mm-hmm. Jeez. Uh, it takes you about five days travel up to the Sea of Moving Ice. You are told by uh, Larusta, Larry. You are told by Larry. I'm just going to call him that. Mm, it's probably it's easier. Best. Yeah. You are told by Larry as the sight of more and more icebergs become more frequently that you are, in fact, now in the sea of moving ice and that his ship is the best ship because it is light and easily built. So at night, if we choose or if we get stuck, we can all get off and lift the boat onto the ice flow. Mm. Um, portage. He says uh, it, it is about uh, nighttime now as you guys are pulling into the area of the Sea of Moving Ice, and he says, it makes no difference to me or my crew, but if it, if it makes a difference to you, whether we stay on the water or on the ice at night, uh, there are creatures in the area, uh, both in water and on the surface, but whichever you guys prefer, we would just keep going. Um, until we find something, um, or um, we can pull on and rest for the night. Uh, you've done this before. What, what's your uh, your best guess for how we should proceed? Yeah, Lair Bear, what's your professional opinion? Likely, if it were just me and my crew, we would just stay in the boat. Okay, sounds great. Then we will stay in the boat. I like that you didn't object to me calling you Lair Bear, though, so I feel like we've really... Well, you guys have been traveling for yeah. a few days, yeah, so like you bonded. guys you guys are like developing maybe a suite. we've made out a couple times in, in the brig. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, There's no break, but there's a broom closet, I'm sure. Yeah, there is. Yeah. It's the same thing, a break in a broom closet, Mm. when there is none. It is uh, getting to be nightfall now. Where are you guys? On deck? Underneath? What's going on? Uh, I'm going to be on deck. Me too. Taking the sights. Me too. Same here. You hear a loud splash come from the bow of the ship. I run run over to look. (laughs) I I look for dolphins. There are, are no dolphins. Merfolk? You normal. <laughs> Looking off the starboard side, you see thrashing in the water, and the heads of two crewmen disappear beneath the waves. Surrounding the boat, you see the scaly heads and bodies of multiple marrow. They begin to rock the ship back and forth. As the ship hits a large wave, you have to hold onto the railing, and you hear more crewmen scream from port side as people and cargo are dumped into the water. 